Minecraft 1.21.4 The Garden Awakens has released and in this super quick video I'll show you how to get your own fabric server set up in no time. Let's get it going. So first of all, if you don't want to leave your PC on 24-7 or have the responsibility of managing your own server, I'd highly recommend checking out this video's sponsor, Apex Hosting. Apex Hosting is a fantastic platform for hosting Minecraft and other games with powerful DDoS protection, great support, super low latency and automated backups among other things I'd highly recommend if you're going to be using a server host, check out Apex Hosting. Currently, you can use code Apex25 for 25% off your first invoice. Get started, select your Minecraft edition or any other game for that matter, server size, and in no time, you'll have your Minecraft 1.21.4 server set up and going. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. So without further ado, let's begin. In order to set up your own Minecraft Fabric server, head across to the Fabric link down below. Simply choose Download for Windows, save it and open it once it's done downloading. Inside of here, you'll have Client and Server. If you don't already have the 1.21.4 Fabric Client installed, just click Install down here and as usual, install the Fabric API. To actually set up your server, head across to the Server tab at the very top and choose a place where you'd like to install it. For me, I'll place it on my desktop inside of a folder called Fabric. We'll choose Install, and shortly after, we'll get a pop-up like this. Choose Download Server Jar, and wait for it to turn green. There we go, and now we can set up our launch command over here. As usual, you'll be setting, most importantly, the amount of RAM that your server can use. You'll be doing that with the XMX command here. Currently, by default, it's set to just two gigabytes of RAM. The more RAM you give your server, the more players you can handle at once, better performance, and things like that up to a certain point. To find out how much RAM your system has, hit Control Shift and Escape to open up the Windows Task Manager. Inside of here, head across to the Performance tab, followed by Memory. Then you'll see just how much RAM your system has. At the bottom, you'll see the available amount of RAM in your system, and that's essentially how much we could hypothetically give our server. Keep in mind, you'll be keeping some RAM for Windows, your browser, and things like that. If you're going to be playing on the same computer, keep some RAM for Minecraft as well, and then with the remaining amount, you can dish that out to your server. So, say you have 12 gigs of RAM, if your PC is using 4, and Minecraft is using another 4, you have one final 4 to give to your Minecraft server. I wouldn't recommend giving it absolutely everything, leave a bit more for extra headroom, so if you have 4 gigs left, give Minecraft maybe 3, if you have 6, give it 5, etc. So, we just need to adjust XMX 2G to be XMX another number G. If you're going to be giving your server 4 gigs, type 4 here, 6, 12, etc. However much RAM you're going to be giving your server. Then choose Generate and Yes, if you see a pop-up like this, click Done and you can close out of the Fabric installer. At this point, you should have a folder on your desktop or wherever you select to be with your Fabric server inside of it and a Start.bat. Open up Start.bat with any text editor such as Notepad and make sure that the XMX value is set correctly. For me, it didn't save, so I'll just type it in again, Save, and now we can close the this. At this point, you should be able to launch up your server and get configuring. If I double click start.bat, you'll see that I'm currently missing Java. If this is you, head across to the next link down below that looks something like this. Simply scroll down and select Windows, then look for the 64 installer, download and install this. So we can just open it and click through as we would any other installer. Clicking next a few times, there you go. We can close and we're done installing Java. At this point, we should be able to run start.bat and this time, our server should actually start unpacking and preparing. Eventually, you'll see this over here telling you you need to accept the EULA, close this window, open EULA.txt, a new file in this folder, and inside of here, just change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. Save this file and close it. Then next, before we launch our server, we'll need to make sure the Fabric API is installed if you'd like mods and things like that to work. Open up the mods folder inside of here, and if you don't already see the Fabric API, head across to the next link down below, which should look like this. Choose download in the top right, then select a game version, so 1.21.4, and choose download. Once you've done that, you can drag this file from your downloads folder into your mods folder here. Once you've done that, you've now installed your Fabric API. If you'd like to install other server-side mods, just drag and drop them in the folder here, making sure they're compatible with 1.21.4, as that's what our server is. At this point, you can run start.bat once more, and your server should boot up, generate a world, and load all of your mods. Super simple. So there we go, our server's running. All we need to do now is just join our server. So for this, I'll select 1.21.4, play, 
And we should see Minecraft Startup head across to Multiplayer, followed by adding a new server. And here we'll just type in 127.0.0.1 to point to the server running on the same computer. The local host also works. Choose Done. And now you should see your servers online. You can join it. And in the background, you'll see some text. We've joined the server. And there you go. In order to give yourself admin in the console, just type in OP space your username, hit enter, and now you've been made an operator or an admin. So game mode creative, for example, and there you go. We're now in creative mode. Super simple. This is great, but when other people want to connect to your server, it can get a bit confusing. First of all, if someone's sitting next to you and they're connected to the same router that you are, all they need to do is get your local IP address. For this, hit start and type in CMD and open up command prompt. Inside of a window that looks something like this, you'll be able to type in IP config. Simply hit enter and you'll see a response that looks like this. Find the way that you're connected to the internet and look for your IPv4 address. This is the address of your computer in your local network. Simply just punch this number in as the server address on a different computer right next to you and they should be able to join your server in no time. If you're not able to join or you'd like to open it up over the internet, we need to look at our window firewall. In the description down below, you'll find a page that looks like this. Simply scroll all the way down until you see this colorful section here. This is a bunch of code to allow port 25565 Minecraft through our Windows firewall. Simply click copy up here, then hit start, type in PowerShell and run this as administrator. Inside of this PowerShell window, just hit Control V to paste and then hit enter a few times to make sure all of these commands have run. At this point, you've now allowed Minecraft through your Windows firewall and people next to you should be able to join if they couldn't before. That being said, if you want people over the internet to connect, we're not done quite just yet. The next step is unfortunately port forwarding. It does scare a lot of people, but it's really not that bad. I'll give you an example of exactly what you need to do. Log into your router, head across to security followed by port forwarding or something along those lines, and you'll see a page that looks like this. I've already forwarded Minecraft, so I'll delete that and we'll start again. You'll usually have an in and an out or an external and an internal. Essentially, just type in 25565 Minecraft's port for both of the options here. If you're like me and you need to enter a range, do so by using the same number. Then for the protocol, you'll just need to choose UDP. But if you have the option for both TCP and UDP, add that just in case. Otherwise, you can add both of these separately if you wish. Then local IP, as you can see, it's already typed out the first bit of it for me, 192.168.1. And if we look back at our IP config command, our IP of my computer is 50, 192.168.1. 150. As I only need to type in the last digits here, that's what I'll do. And we'll add, bam, there we go. We've now port forwarded Minecraft. It's that simple. As long as our server is running, people should be able to join it over the internet if we give them our external IP, which you can get just by Googling what is my IP. However, if you're still having issues, then you'll need to either contact your ISP and ask why port forwarding isn't working. Otherwise, you can try using a host, such as the sponsor of this video, Apex Hosting, link down below, or alternatively, use a Minecraft proxy service where people will connect to a different computer over the internet that bounces to yours just by running software on your PC. And you'll find a link down below to a guide explaining that. Now that you've got your server port forwarded or you're using a proxy, people should be able to join your Minecraft server and play over the internet. So that's really it. When you get to a point where you're happy to quit and save your server, tab back to your Minecraft server and in here type in save hyphen all to save the world and everything in it. And then you can close your server by typing exit and hitting enter. This will bring it to a graceful stop. Don't just click the X button up here. Anyways, that's about it. You now have your Minecraft Fabric server set up. You can install mods, customize it, etc. as you see fit. If you'd like to find out more about modding and stuff like that, you'll find a bunch of useful links down below. Once again, a huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.